Hey guys, it's Kat again. This is the second update for the night. It is November 13th, 2010. And I'm coming to you with a quick fast update on other things non-hair related. So if you want to see the hair related update, check out the video I made prior to this. Okay? So, I'm actually in bed, about to go to sleep. And I wanted to just make a little update video on some things that I've been doing recently. Um, and just shout them out. Okay, if you follow me on my blog, uh, the naturalista files at blogspot.com you'll definitely be able to see that I have a fascination with bow ties now it's a very quick little blur because I've been insanely busy with everything else school work um, school work newspaper editing um, doing a lot of everything for everything so I went to this store called Reminis which is super duper cute it's in Chelsea um, if you live in the city you know where it is okay and I've been going there for years, actually. They have, like, cute little magnets and, and postcards and little, like, kitschy things and just fun stuff. They have, like, a whole pile of, like, bow ties for, like, 2 and $3. This is, like, a nice chocolate brown one that I bought. I'm dying to wear it. I also bought this really cool necktie thing that I'm going to make into something. It's, like, a blue and black um, houndstooth kind of print, right? I also bought this really groovy bow tie, which I'm dying to wear. I can't wait. It's like a green stripe, right? Okay. Then I bought a pink one, which I'm so excited because I love the color pink. And I got this dope fabric for like a headscarf or like a turban. It's a blue, like rosy, like roses or spider webby kind of design, blue and black. And then this other one, which is so gorgeous I'm gonna have this for a long time so I got that from that store which is really fun and exciting super cheap super inexpensive they just have like a lot of cool stuff they're on 6th Avenue and 23rd Street um that's where they are the other thing I am so excited to tell you about is um my nails my nails are making progress they're kind of bouncing back as you can see it's becoming something a little more healthy, a little more hard, thank God, because after I had my photo shoot for my t-shirt line a couple months ago, like two months ago, two and a half months ago, I actually um, had some falsies put on and took them off myself, which is not the smartest thing to do, but it really messed up my nails. So um, because I love and read the Mop Top Maven, I saw her using this Essie um, Fill the Gap, and I'm telling you, Whatever this has been doing to my nails in the last few weeks, it's ridiculous. Listen. My nails are getting back their house. Becoming stronger. It's filling in the areas that were a little jacked. And I love it. So thank you, Nicole, for showing that on your site, on your blog, because I totally am using it and I love it. Because if, if not for you, I wouldn't have known about this, really. So thanks for that. Um, What else? So, I'm also reading a couple of books, besides school books and all that. This book, well, let me back up. So, I go to um, a church that's really amazing. It's called the Journey Metro. It's called The Journey. And if you want to find out more about it, you can go on journeymetro.com. But it's a church, a New York City-based church, um, with many different campuses. So, they have campuses all over the different boroughs of New York City. They also have a campus um, in California. And they have a campus, a newly owned, um, newly opened Boca Raton, uh, Florida campus that just opened. So it's one church, one belief, but many different campuses. And every spring we, um, we read a book. Every uh, fall we read a book. Every summer we do, you know, groups that read books. Um, we do groups of 10 to 12 people. But we call them gross groups. And they're really amazing. So every fall we read a different book as a church. Okay. So this fall we're reading Simple Faith by Charles R. Swindle, which is pretty amazing. Simple Faith, Discovering What Really Matters. Um, and it's, it's a really interesting book because it talks about, you know, it, it just kind of invites you to free yourself from the tedious demands of the Christian quote-unquote obstacle course and return to the life of hope, grace, and rest that Christ has always offered. Dispelling the myth that maturity means bowing to the never-ending requirements of rule-oriented religion, Swindle calls you back to the simplicity of the Sermon on the Mount. No more harried and hurried, I can, do, I can never do enough religion. No more complicated systems of performance-based faith. 
No more phony masks. No more rat race Christianity. This is an amazing book. And it says, Return to the only life worth living. A life of simple faith. I'm totally loving this book. Loving it because it just breaks down. It's really real. And I do sometimes feel like, you know, in the beginning of my journey, I was going and signing up for everything, doing a lot of everything, getting very frustrated, never wanting to do anything because I lost the passion and the reason why I was doing it. And sometimes people get caught up in that, but really your faith and your grace and your honesty has to be in it for God. You can't be doing it to look good to other people. You can't be volunteering for all these things if you want to get a check mark and, and talk about it. You know, that's between you and your God. You know, that's between you and your conversations and your relationship with God. And He knows what you do. He sees you when no one else sees you. He sees and hears everything that's in your spirit and your heart. So, it's an interesting book. Um, another book that... Uh, I think I left it in the other room. But another book that um I'm reading right now is The Power by Rhonda Byrne. And she also wrote The Secret. And you know how I feel about The Secret. So The Power is a new book. It came out recently. I got it. It's pretty good. I haven't fallen into it as quickly as I did The Secret. Probably because I'm too busy to really sit and explore the book. And also because The Secret just kind of hit me over the head immediately. And The Power is interesting. It talks a lot about love in the beginning of the book. And how love and repelling love and good feeling and good intent really brings a lot to your life. So I dig in that because I feel it, right? But I need to just sit with the book when I don't have all these other complications and I can just read the book. So another book that I was reading and I don't have it with me, I'm so sorry. I gave it back to my friend and fellow blogger and vlogger, Vivacious1083. I gave it back to her. Um, but she let me borrow the book and it was a book that she read in her girls group. Um, at church and it was called I think lion in a pit on a snowy day right I, I may have just butchered the title of the book but the the guy that wrote it the young man that wrote it is the pastor of um, the NCC I think it's a natural national community church and it's one church with many different campuses and they're based out of DC in Georgetown and like all that they have a cafe that's called Ebenezer's and it's there so if you know the area definitely do that they're also the church down there that meets in different theaters movie theaters and stuff I think you can find it online at theater church or something like that theaterchurch.com anywho the book is so amazing it talks about how we as people especially Christian people, people need to be a little insane about something, need to be a little bit worked up about something, a little crazy about something, a little fired up in the pit of your stomach about something. Talked about this guy in the Bible that got into a pit on a snowy day and faced the lion and slayed the lion and won against the lion. Like this guy, Benaniah, I believe his name was, didn't have to get in the pit with the lion. He could have ran out. He could have said, you know what? I'm not going to take this lion down. But he said, I am going to get in the pit and act like this is the last thing I can do. Even if the lion kills me, I'm going to go in there and take it. And he took that lion. His book talks about doing things that are scary, doing things that, are, that you fear, doing things that you would never imagine yourself doing, doing things that um, others might deem risky because you have to be risky because God died for us. He put it. He was put on the cross, okay, and he risked everything for us to have the life that we have. And all we have to do is live in his glory and risk everything by being a follower and being a person that lives a, a life of purpose and intent and happiness and peace and hunger and being the best at whatever it is that you do. So. I don't know y'all. Check out the book. I'm already at 10 minutes on this video. I can't talk anymore. Talk to you guys soon. Hope everyone's doing well. Thank you to my new subbies, my new olds, all together, everybody. And check me out here and check me out on my blog. I'll definitely be doing more videos very soon. Have a good night. Talk to you guys soon.